Although it's only been a few months, it feels like it has been ages since I've last stepped foot in a baseball stadium. I miss it, and I know all of you do too. But like I've said before, during this time we have a unique opportunity to set ourselves up for success when baseball finally returns. We've talked about pitchers and hitters before on the channel, but what about catchers and umpires? Can data be used to evaluate them? Of course. And you can get started on creating some of these systems I talk about in today's video, all from the comfort of your own home. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. Guys, I can't thank you enough for the awesome support I received from the first drop of hats. We were able to sell out within the first 48 hours. That was incredible. And let me tell you, the next round of hats are dropping very soon over on my website. Follow me on Twitter for the latest updates and more. Now back to today's video. We've talked about TrackMan data a ton on this channel, but we don't often get super technical on how to break it down. For every single pitch, TrackMan spits out 75 columns worth of data, which is incredible. But what are you supposed to do next? In today's video, we are going to break down just two of those columns in order to understand how we can better evaluate catcher's and umpire's performance. The two variables that we will be breaking down today are plate loc height, or plate location height, and plate loc side, or plate location side. They can be found in columns AO and AP if you are exporting a TrackMan report post-game. As you would imagine, these two stats measure exactly where in space each pitch was when it crossed home plate. It's important to note that these two columns are measured in feet, so 1.5 would be 1.5 feet, or 18 inches, not 1 foot and 5 inches. Now let's take a look at your typical strike zone to gain a better understanding of these variables, starting with plate loc side. Plate loc side is the measure of how many feet a pitch was from the center of the plate. So your midpoint in the zone would read as 0.0, .0 on plate loc side. If you are behind home plate, negative numbers appear to be to the left of this middle point and positive numbers to the right. Home plate is exactly 17 inches across. So in order to create a border around that area, the official TrackMan zone sits at negative 0.75 feet to the left of the midline and 0.75 feet to the right. That equates to 9 inches on each side, or 18 inches across. Now on to plate loc height. This statistic is not as exact as plate loc side because of players varying heights in batting stances, but the official TrackMan zone takes the average player's height and sets the bottom of the zone at 1.65 feet off the ground in the top of the zone at 3.65 feet. It is possible to customize this variable to each of your hitters depending on their heights, but I found that these numbers work quite well as an average when evaluating catchers and umpires. So great, we now have a general outline of what a typical zone looks like numerically when utilizing these variables. But you all are here to take this to the next level. Well, get out your computers and let's start to apply all of this. So how can we use this information in order to properly evaluate our catchers and gain an edge with understanding our umpire's tendencies? There are two ways to do this, starting with graphically. Let's bring back our zone from the previous screen. In order to properly evaluate the effect a catcher or an umpire have on the game, you first need to sort out the pitches that they have an impact on. That means heading to the column labeled Pitch Call in column B and sorting out only called strikes and called balls. Next, you can create a scatter plot utilizing the variables we talked about on the previous screen, remembering the TrackMan strike zone variables. You can then see how your catchers or umpires performed in one game, a series, or an entire season. I find it's best to choose two colors to represent called strikes and called balls. In this example, we will have called strikes in red and called balls in green. These reports are specifically useful when seeing strikes that are called balls or balls that are called strikes. Here's an example report that I've done in the past. You can see that there are more strikes called out of the zone than you would typically expect. This is a tendency that if you know in advance, can help lead to success on the field. At the same time, it also acts as a very useful tool to provide to umpires post game for them to analyze their own performance. I've had several umpires reach out to me in the past about receiving copies, and it's always a great way for them to continue to perfect their craft with tangible information. This can further be broken down by pitcher, by hitter, or simply just lefties versus righties. If you want to take this graph a step forward for your catchers, 
You can set each of the zones separately and create a heat map for what zones they generate the most called strikes. Seeing red zones means good performance, and blue may lead you to something that a catcher may need to improve on. Pairing this with video of your games, you may begin to see that perhaps they give up on high pitches too often, or drop their gloves too low on low pitches. This is an awesome tool you can use to help improve your catchers. The next way you can break this information down, of course, is statistically. For catchers, you can look at things like their in-zone strike percentage to make sure they're getting all of the easy ones, or you can look at their out-of-zone strike percentage to see how many they're stealing. Framing is such an integral part of today's game, and so many programs out there focus on improving it, but with this kind of information, you can provide statistical evidence to see how players can improve over time. For umpires, you can look at some of the same things, but also what is their correct call percentage to understand why your guys maybe struggled at the plate today, and also see what kind of effect this information sways how your catcher performed. Now, I didn't dive that deep into the way I create these reports, but I will leave a link in the description to a template you can use to create one of these charts for your own in Excel. I will also note that while this can be done in Excel, understanding how to automate this process with R makes a huge difference. I've seen a few comments here and there that you all would like to see some more technical videos breaking down this pitch information, and I thought this was a great place to start. I didn't necessarily dive deep into the exact keys you need to press on your computer to create these reports, but I hope this video did give you some ideas on how you can apply this wherever you may be. And who knows, once RoboUmp comes around, this all will be useless and we will all be focusing on the next big thing for our catchers. Regardless of that point, we all should be using our time wisely to continue to grow and to continue to learn more about the game we love. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.